Hi, this is Cheryl from Arthritis Life. So, some questions today. Can you do your basic activities without pain? Have you ever tried yoga for a health problem and had it work? Can you like eat, sleep, hear, and see without medical intervention? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you have some degree of health privilege or able-bodied privilege. So, what does privilege mean? Privilege simply means unearned advantage. Almost everyone has some degree of health privilege, but that said, some have more than others. In the same way that it's problematic to tell someone from an underprivileged background that they should just pick themselves up from their bootstraps, it's also problematic for an able-bodied person to tell someone with a disability that they should just try yoga or just think positively. The first problem is in the word just. There is no just if you're living with a disability or a health issue. For most of us, it, every single thing that we do has a burden beyond just living with a disability. The other problem is that people suggesting these things are often, one, unaware of their own health privilege, and two, operating under false assumptions, such as that everyone can control their health or their destiny if they just do certain things, which it's a comforting thought, but it's just logically not true. There's a lot of things that we don't have control over in our bodies, whether we're able-bodied or not. So once you start understanding health privilege, you might start noticing it everywhere, like I have. Um, a quick example is breastfeeding. So there's this idea that, you know, everyone can, can breastfeed if they try, which is not true, like just physically not true, whether it's somebody who might have had a double mastectomy for breast cancer prior to getting pregnant, that would be a very clear-cut example to people who whose bodies don't make sufficient milk for their babies. Um, this, you know, kind of well-meaning kind of able-bodied privilege can actually have a lot of really negative consequences including in the case of breastfeeding, you know, infants that are actually starving because of this erroneous belief that the body, human body, just works well for everyone all the time. Health privilege even exists within similar disability communities. A lot of times people are excited if they can control their disease activity naturally through things like diet or exercise, and that is amazing if it works for you. But there's a difference between saying, I tried this and it worked in my body to, th that, is, that is one thing. But it's another thing to presume or assume that because you tried it and it worked for you, it's necessarily going to work for someone else. And that's just not true. It's a, it is technically a degree of privilege if you're able to take a certain action and have it work for your disability because other people might take that same action and, it, and not have it work. So what can you actually do about all this? I don't wanna just sit and complain all day. I wanna actually give you some tangible actions you can take to check your health privilege and ultimately treat people with disabilities in a more humane and less simplistic way. So how do you do this? Okay, these are my ideas. I'd love to hear yours. Um, but first, my idea is acknowledge that your health is only partly under your control. That's going to help you um, avoid some of these, again, illogical conclusions like, oh, you just do this and then you're gonna feel better. Number two, reframe your statements to acknowledge your health privilege. Reframing just means looking at the same information from a different point of view or different frame. For example, instead of saying, I'm never going to take medicine or I, I'm never gonna take prescriptions, you can just say, I'm fortunate to manage my health without prescriptions. Number three, seek out additional narratives of people with different disabilities and be sure to include both visible and invisible disabilities. This should help you be more nuanced in your approach. Number four, ask first before offering advice to somebody with an illness or a disability. Number five, learn about ableism. So ableism is outright discrimination or prejudice against people with disabilities or people who are not fully able-bodied. So. The point of this video and this post is simply to help people become, again, more nuanced, less simplistic in their approach, and ultimately more humane and compassionate towards people with different abilities. Because living with a disability or a health condition is hard enough without people's kind of cluelessly ableist or health-privileged comments. 
So if you could prevent yourself from acting in a privileged way towards someone with a disability, it's gonna make that person's life a lot easier. So I'd love to hear your guys' ideas in the comments. Um, thank you so much for your time. Bye.